sorts. All sorts of crap. They actually were quite open, in all stripes. So this guy made me think I was drunk. <laughs> oh my god. So now you think it's perfectly good and then he moves. Wait for it. So here are your two options. So I went for this option. That's what I bought. Still, I must think of me. Fresh water is, after all, a vital ingredient in the art of making Scotch whiskey. Aqua Vita, or in Gaelic, Yushkabea, the water of life. More specifically, it's the smell of burning peat. Now, peat is a young form of coal. And another factor in determining a whiskey's unique final flavor. Is it just me? Was it getting a wee bit hot in here? <laughs> it is getting hot. Ah. Oh, it's yourself. I was just having a wee bit biding its time, building up its strength a wee bit. Oh well, that's it. The wort is then cooled, ready for the next stage. The residue left in the mash tun can be used to make animal feed. The work might not look that special, let me assure you, this will become pure liquid gold. So what, I hear you ask, is the one magical ingredient which helps turn a malty sugary wort into something with well, let's say a wee bit more of a kick to it. Well, the answer is right here. This is yeast. The importance of this microscopic edict when sugar turns to alcohol in a process known as fermentation. A human maelstrom of peak transform. And if the whole thing threatens to get out of hand and overspill, you're in switch of blades above. Keep the whole thing in check. And don't be taking too deep a breath in here, by the way. The papers produced can clear a pack a punch. The alcohol content at this point is still too low and needs to be increased. We do this during distillation. Now, pay attention. The liquid is heated in a pot still, and because alcohol boils at a lower temperature, it separates from the water. The vapor rises up the neck and is cooled and condensed back into a liquid by a copper coil immersed in cold water known as... The worm. Here we see the cooling and condensing process in action. The liquid is now known as low wine. But it needs to be distilled again to further increase its alcohol content. And that takes place here, in the spirit still. Each distillery has its own unique shape of copper pot still. Another factor in ensuring that each distillery produces its own unique flavor 
of Scotch whiskey. By now, the liquid is so strong, it has to be kept under lock and key by customs and excise. Here in the spirit safe, the still man weaves his magic by judging precisely when to send the first part of the run, or four shots, and the last part of the run, or faint, back to be distilled again. Meanwhile, the middle cut, or heart of the run, is sent to the spirit receiver. But it's still not Scotch whiskey. Oh, no. Not for a long while yet. These casks won't see the light of day for at least three years. Some not for 12 or even 50 years. During this period of maturation, a whiskey's unique final flavor is further enhanced by the wood of the cask that it's stored in. Its clear color changed to a golden hue. What was once nothing more than barley and water magically matures into Scotch whiskey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a grand job in telling me the basics of my art, but let me try to paint you a clearer picture. Green whiskey, which makes up the base of the blend, is like the canvas of a painting. You may not pay much attention to the canvas, but if you think about it, it needs to be the right quality to absorb and display the beautiful colours in the artist's palette. In fact, any masterpiece is only as good as its canvas. It's the same with green whiskey. You may think it's only there in the background, but without it, there would be no great blend to enjoy. In the same way that the artist subtly mixes many different colours together to create his masterpiece, the blender blends the flavoursome single malt whiskies expertly with the green whiskies to create something unique and magical. And there you have it. A masterpiece. But enough for me. I'm keeping you from the most exciting part. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> Fancy and dramatic here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, bring the whiskey guys, bring your bags, there's a table at the top of the collection, get up to the table, the table that's up there, guys. The younger whiskey, it's a less in the barrels, it's a bit sharper. It probably spent most of the time in its bourbon cask, which gives that sweetness to it. If it's darker, it's in more time to mature, drop more from the cask, more flavour to it. And probably spent at least some time in its sherry cask, which gives that sort of rich sweetness to it. I've been looking around. I've hit that foot again. Really? Is it a JD? <laughs> Some more unique bottles.